Hello guys and welcome to the video. This build is for the Wish Dozer class for patch 2.5. This is the Lon Spirit Barrage guys. It is back in a big way and it's fast becoming the meta solo Witch Doctor build for the current patch man. And it's because Phantasm, this little spirit here, is still classed as a pet. Which is pretty cool, man. So, um, the build's not super OP, but it's bloody strong. It is bloody strong, I ain't gonna lie. And it's very, very fun to play, man. Because I've been one I want to play a Spirit Bride Witch Doctor for a long time. It was nerfed a while ago when it was you worked with Zuni, but for Lon it worked and it's very, very strong. It's very, very similar to the build I built about four or five months ago. But uh, all credit goes to, um, I can't pronounce his name, it's a guy from Asia who pushed this build to. He's done GR 102 at 1.6k Paragon, guys, on the new season of this. And even uh, Mr. Bascalator himself as well, man, has done a 98 at the same Paragon as well. So uh, it's extremely good. It's a very, very good build. Anyway, let's go it through, guys, how this all works. Right, so okay, guys, first up, we can do the skills. Uh, of course, it's Spirit Barrage build. So Spirit Barrage from Lotto Myers, basically every time you hit this spirit, it heals you for 6.4k. This is an attack speed build. You want attack speed above everything else in this to keep yourself alive and propping your Quilla. So, uh, yeah, you have a lot of uh, very, very, very fast attack speed in this one. And this is my seasonal character. I've already got one augment on my gear, and uh, it's strong, guys. It's very, very cool. And it looks cool as fuck as well, man. It's really, really strong. It's quite a glass cannon build, though. It's a glass cannon. Okay, guys, uh, this build does use the Ring of Emptiness, which is in the cube, which gives us that 300% damage buff. So, of course, we're using Haunt Draining Spirit. Why Draining Spirit? Because, basically, you've got to keep your mana up, okay? You've got to keep your mana up. We are using Rush of Essence, which is on the Hellfire Amulet, which gives us uh, power as well every time we cast a mana spender. But, um, Draining Spirit just makes it, just to make sure that you keep your Quiller bonus up. So basically on the quiller here, while you're above 90% primary resource, so basically mana, uh, all damage taken is reduced by 50%, okay? So it's very, very important to keep this buff up, your quiller up. So draining spirit does help, but it depends, you know? You might have more mana on your character, and you could change this to probably poison spirit, which might be a better option. So experiment with your character, you know what I mean? You might have more mana than me through paragon or through gear, so you know, do some testing. Ultimately, you want to use poison spirit if you can, but for, at the beginning, use draining spirit. Lovely. Okay, guys, of course, uh, Piranhas, Piranhas, this is for the grouping aspect, so basically that's 50% increased damage. Basically, you want to be in the thick of the mobs, you want to be right up on close and personal, because uh, it's a close range build as well, but it can be used at range as well, which is very, very cool, it's very, very, uh, a bit like a Swiss Army knife thing. So basically, yeah, most of time you just want to grab all the mobs together, pack them in nice and tight, and start casting Spirit Barge and blow the shit out of them, man. It's cool. Okay, guys, uh, Soul Harvest Languish, as usual, for the Intelligence buff and the Armor buff, we are using the Sacred Harvester in the cube as well. And of course, uh, Lambuka braces as well for the massive 60% damage reduction and giant armor buff. Absolute best, man. So, you know, every build pretty now. Um, this one's up to you guys. I prefer Spirit Walk Severance because I really like zooming off from pack to pack during a GR. But other options could be um, Healing Journey if you want a bit of extra healing or Jaunt for three seconds. But I really do love Severance personally. I like Severance, man. Love it. And of course, guys, Local Swarm Cloud of Insects. Okay, now Cloud of Insects gives you 25 of damage reduction for the duration of the spell. Uh, because we're using Creeping Death, this spell and this spell here will be permanent on the targets. It's very, very nice. Remember though, Cloud Insects doesn't spread that well, so if you're doing a really big trash pack, you know what I mean? You tend to cast about two to three in the big trash pack, and generally that is enough, okay? For passive guards, of course, we are using Spirit Vessel for self res Confidence Ritual for that 25 additional damage as well, which is a multiplication bonus. Grave Injustice for all the cooldowns, so that we, we can Spirit Walk, Harvest, and more importantly, Nado very, very often. And of course, Recruiting Death to make uh, the DOT spells here permanent, man. So uh, you procs that ring of emptiness nice and tight. Uh, guys, fifth passive is Rush of Essence. Rush of Essence basically gives us infinite power. Okay, gives us infinite power. So basically, Spirit spells return 100 mana over 10 seconds. So the faster your attack speed is, the faster you're going to heal yourself and of course give you that all-important mana to keep that Aquila buff up. Okay? Lovely. But remember though, guys, um, you know, if you get Hellfire Amulet with any of the other current passives, that's absolutely fine. Just put Rush Essence here and just swap it to your leisure. Lovely! Okay, so uh, we could go cube first. Okay, guys, in the cube, of course, is the Sacred Harvester. This gives us 10 snacks, a Soul Harvest, which gives that giant armor buff and, of course, uh, the uh, Lakumba's Ball Ornament, 60% damage reduction. Okay, it sounds like a lot of damage reduction, but even with that, you still most of the time have to use red gems in your armor to give yourself an armor buff. Like I said, this build is very, very squishy. If you are a pro dodger, though, man, if you're really good at dodging effects and, and all that sort of shit, then of course use Topaz for more DPS. But as a new player, I really suggest you use uh, 
red gems, man, or even dex gems. It gives you the same effect for the armor. Okay, lovely. Okay, guys, and the second item, of course, is Belt of Transcendence. Summons a fetch cycle when you hit with a mana spender. So basically, as you're spamming Spirit Barrage like an absolute beast, you're going to immediately get 15 fetches up straight away. The fetches are not here for DPS, they're there for off tanking. So basically, most of the time, you're going to be running to a big group of mobs, you're going to prioritize them up, you're going to basically be in the middle of them, casting like a trooper, and then all the fetishes will be summoned around your character, blocking nasty melee attacks, you know, physical spells and things like that. So it's very, very important to have fetishes. But, you know, you can change this to uh, maybe a Grim Reaper, for instance. So you, you can have your Mimics cast in uh, extra Prana Nados and things like that, for instance. You could use this. But the uh, the Mimics that cast the Spirit Barrage won't have the giant damage bonus that you will have, though. So please bear that in mind. But, yeah, you can use it for a bit of extra CC. But I've done a lot of testing. Overall, Belt Transcendence is, in my opinion, the best choice. And, of course, guys, like I said earlier, the last choice, of course, is the Ring of Emptiness. And you deal 300% increased damage to enemies affected by your Haunt and Locust Swarm, which makes this build work really, really well. Uh, please note though guys, for lower torment farming as well, like torment 13, you don't even need to run Ring of Emptiness. You don't even have to run it at all. You can, it's, the damage is more than enough just to blow shit up on screen pretty much instantly, which is cool. So uh, you can opt out for some pets basically. So um, if I make this a speed pet build, I'll just change that to a, um, a short man's finger for instance. And I'll drop her these haunt spells and all that sort of stuff. And put in guards and leeching beast dogs and put on fierce loyalty instead of creeping depths. So straight away you could just turn it into a speed farming build as well. I'll release the build, I'll release the build guy for that a bit later. And then you just change that to an Ingeon. So you can turn this into a speed farming build as well. Which is really really nice. So it's very very versatile. That's one of the love things I always loved about the long builds. They're very very versatile. Okay guys, for the optimal roles for all the gear, as usual in the description of this video, there is a build guide link, okay? To good old Diablo fans, I love the Diablo fans. And it tell you basically all the best roles for every piece of gear. And of course, it include this video on there as well, man. Okay? Right, so uh, what we've got in the gear, guys. Of course, man, you want to use the Barber. Okay? The Barber, basically, instead of de dealing direct damage, your Spirit Barrage now accumulates on the target. When you stop casting, it explodes in up to 250. I've got 231. Damn it. I oh, know. Uh, to all enemies within 15 yards. So basically, it's a giant AoE. It just goes bang, bang, bang. You know, pretty much, you want to be casting all the time. Because when you stop casting, you're going to die, basically. Because, you know, it heals you. You know what I mean? It heals you and uh, keeps the Aquila up, of course. Um, guys, please note as well, um, you always want to equip the barber in your hand. Why do you want to keep equip the barber in your hand? Why shouldn't I just put this in the cube? The reason is because the barber has the fastest attack speed out of all the ceremonial knives we have in the game. I know, it's strange, isn't it? But um, where's my second harvester, man? Have I got an attack speed harvester? But basically, it's got a much, much faster base attack speed. I can't see. Let me see if I've got an attack speed. I know I've got one, I just can't fucking find it. Uh, well, basically, um, an attack a standard ceremonial knife with an attack speed of 7 will have 1.50 attacks. And you see, though, on the right here, to my second eye of my barber, it's got 1.61 attacks per second. So always equip the barber. This build is all based on attack speed. If you can, make sure the barber is equipped, okay? Always. And always with attack speed and percent damage. Area damage doesn't really do anything for this build, by the way. So, uh... Make sure you take it out your paragon, which I forgot to do actually. I'll probably do that now as well. But a lot of people doing a lot of tests. Apparently, er apparently, area damage doesn't really work that well. Apparently, it can actually interfere in the build. So feel free to test it and leave the comments in the section below. So you guys, uh, Bob Weapon, of course, uh, Mojo must be the Gazing Demise Mojo. I was super, super fortunate to get the meta drop. This Mojo does not naturally roll crits. So uh, I was very, very lucky to get this one here. So I've got Invert, Crit, 15 Spirit Barrage damage, and full tier of 50 of the bonus. Spirit Barrage gains the Phantasm room. Each active Phantasm increases the damage of Spirit Barrage by 48%. So that's where that little ghost comes from, from this here. And it's that little ghost that is classed as a pet that makes this build work, man. And it's, uh, it's a really nice little build, actually. It's not crazy OP like, like a wizard DPS, man, but if for a Witch Doctor, it's nice. It's, it's really, really fun to play. It's awesome. Okay, guys, boots, man. Uh, illusory boots. I love illusory boots. Um, move unhindered through enemies. So basically, nothing can stop you. You can just move for everything. But there is a few other choices for boots as well. You, we can actually use firewalkers. Now, I can't remember if this was nerfed a while ago, but apparently firewalkers, DOT, where you burn on the ground. Now, see this here? Apparently, back in the day, this used to snack Strecken on Rift Guardians and shit. So I don't know if that's still been nerfed or not, but it's definitely worth exploring. Uh, definitely worth exploring. 
Another choice, guys, would be quite nice as well, would be the Boots of Disregard. So most of the time you want to be standing still channeling your uh, your DPS and stuff. So this one here, and I actually got the meta roll on this as an ancient, man, pretty cool. Um, gain 10,000 life regen per second for each second you stand still. In fact, stacks up to four times. So basically 40,000 life per second is a lot. It's a hell of a lot. So obviously we would lose illusionary boots and uh, we're better to move through all the mobs unhindered. But this is quite a nice option, actually. And I might test this test this out because, you know, like I said, this build is squishy. And that would help with the squishes in the build, man. It's quite a nice item. Love it. A few different options. Okay, guys, Biss Legs, without a shadow of a doubt, is, of course, is the Swampland Waders. Um, the reason why I'm using this is not because of the sacrifice damage or anything like that. It's because it rolls on elemental damage. Okay, so you want cold on this one. This gives a pure cold build. Unfortunately, mine's got Firebomb here, and it needs an armor. Arrgh, I know, it's so annoying, man. It's so annoying. Okay, guys, uh, so what makes this whole build work, of course, is the Legacy of Nightmare Rings. Okay, so basically, you get 4% damage reduction per every ancient item. So uh, what's that, 52% at maximum 13 Ancients, and 100% damage bonus between all of them as well. So 1,300% damage bonus. Uh, first gen, guys, you want to use, of course, is Bane of the Trap, which is proc from Cold Spells. So it's going to be proc at range, but, you know, let's say we're going to be up close in person anyway. So it's going to be proc at range, and you just get that giant damage bonus. You can change um, the Bane of the Trap to a Pain Enhancer. If you change this around, you will do less damage overall to the Rift Guardian at the end. But for trash clearance, having a pain in hearts with this giant attack speed buff is crazy. It's really, really good. But I've done a lot of tests. Overall, trapped is better, especially on the rift guarding kill. But uh, you know, if you're playing in a team, you know what I mean, then uh, you could probably pop this on there, man, and just kill trash in a blink of an eye. I've been testing this as a fire variant as well on um, in four man's doing 90s, and it performs really, really well as a fire variant. I've got a video coming out for that quite soon as the fire build. Oh, that one's just uh, it's crazy fun. It's really, really good. Lovely. Okay, guys, so uh, with your rings, man, you always want this standard trifecta if you can find them. So attack speed, CC, CHD, socket. You don't want area damage in this build because it just doesn't work. A lot of people report that it does not work. I've tested myself, area damage doesn't seem to do anything. It's all about the Phantasm explosion, man. It doesn't seem to work with area damage. Of course, guys, this belt will be a witcher now. Like again, I said, it's all about the attack speed. So uh, you can pop this in here. Uh, what you could do, actually, is wear a Transcendence belt. Instead, if you wanted to, then you, can change the, then you can change the transcendence in the cube to another item if you wish. But remember, it will hit that attack speed. So it depends if you keep your mana and your health up. But you could change this to another item. So to so transcendence, you could put like a Grim Reaper or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's up to you, ultimately. Lovely. So uh, next ring gem, guys, of course, is the Enforcer gem. Um, but remember, this is actually a pet build from the Phantasm. So the Enforcer gem will buff this spirit and make it hit very, very hard. And also makes your fetches so they never die as well, which is nice. Okay, guys, I was super lucky, man, to get these absolutely crazy good Frostburn Gauntlets. These dropped for me last night, and I, I just freaked out, man. This is the first decent, well-rolled item that I've needed for the season. And I've got the perfect Frostburns, man. Perfect Frostburns. So attack speed, CC, CHD. And uh, anyway, it could have been better if that as like arcane would have been uh, physical, but man, I'm really happy with these gloves. These gloves, guys, give you 20% increased damage and 50% chance to freeze enemies, so you get a natural CC going on as well. And it helps you on the Rift Guardian so much as well. And you see the Rift Guardian going, uh, 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 getting frozen and shit, man. Brilliant gloves, absolutely fantastic gloves. Like I said, though, guys, we're using the Aquila chest plate, so while we're above 90% prime resource, so mana, all damage reduction is by 50%. Uh, shoulders, guys, there's a few options. You can use corruption shoulders, which you can craft, which gives that little bit of pickup radius. But overall, your best shoulder for this is the Pauldrons of the Skeleton King, because it gives you basically a free, sometimes self res, which could always be very, very handy during a GR. Uh, for the helm, guys, you want to use a Mask of Germ. Remember, this is classed as a pet build, because the Phantasm is a pet, so Mask of Germ will buff the damage by 99% here. Unfortunately, I have the wrong roll. I need that vitality to be Spirit Barrage, but I'll work on that. Okay, guys, this build does require a Hellfire Amulet. I did two hours the other night of doing pure Hellfire runs and crafted so many. This was the only one that even got close. This was the only one that got close. So, uh, yeah, it's hard, man. But on my roll, you want cold CCCHD socket. I'm missing CHD on this one. Urgh. I'll see if I can farm another one sometime. And of course, guys, the last item, of course, is Lacumba's Ornament for uh, that giant uh, damage reduction. Mine's quite nice. This is the only item that I've got that's actually counter on the gear. Uh, guys, for follow up, 
Uh, in favor, I always use the Jangdo Dagger, run to Lightning, so it props from the Wild Wild Ring, so basically it stuns the Rift Guardian, it's a very, very good combo. Attack speed and cooldown on all the gear if you can, and with Desire, so when it charms a target, 35% increased damage. Oculus Ring, guys, please know Oculus Ring is propped from the Ring of Emptiness. Yeah, not everybody you know that, but it's actually propped from Ring of Emptiness. So basically when Horn and Locust Storm is on target and it dies, you get 100% uptime on the pool of power from the Oculus Ring, from the follower, which is very, very, very big deal in this build. Very big deal, man, so that's cool. And uh, freeze deflection, guys. So sometimes when they basically the guy gets attacked, you get, they get frozen. It's very, very handy. Lots of CC. Right, so uh, we're going to do a GR80 now. Show the build in action. Show you how basically how it works. It's very, very simple, guys. Just blow shit up. Very much. Just blow shit up. The thing you want to do, of course, is uh, get your soul harvest snacks up. So we've got a few here. There we go. Let's just walk blast through this. We're just going to do a GR80 just to show mechanics. I've got this set up on non-seasons at about 2k Paragon, but I do want to record it with a super high Paragon count. I'm going to show you what you guys can do with this in the early stages as well. So there's an ADO. Look, there's the poor Paragon I was talking about earlier. There we go. Nade them up again. And just watch them get absolutely blown the fuck up. Most of the time, at, at this particular level, you mean, like, I don't always have to. Apply my RE bonus at this particular level. You know, I can just <laughs> just uh, bunch them up and uh, blow them up like this. It's filthy, man. It's filthy. But I mean, like like at any GR build, you always want to progress to uh, elite packs, man. You want to like progress those elite packs preferably, man. But we'll just quickly show it in action. There we go. Bunch them all up. A few haunts. Because we have so much attack speed in this build, it's really easy to get the haunts off on this build as well. You can get the haunts off in a pinch. You just, like, you've got so much attack speed, like bang, bang, bang. There we go. Lovely. Well, I've got my snacks up, so it's so fine. Oh, Shock Tower, man. Unfortunately, we've got a map here that's not giving us no real density. Like any decent build, it really, really uh, shines, man, when you're in there. Uh, in a map with a uh, really, really fucking crazy density, because you can just blow them up so quick. So, so quickly. But like I said, this is a glass cannon build, so I might even die once, maybe twice during this video. That's like nobody, of course. There we go, we've got a pack there. And what's nice as well, this build doesn't use Traveler's Pledge, so you don't have to worry about standing still all the fucking time, which I really like. Yeah, you can, you can, you can just jump around and uh, all that sort of stuff. And we're going packed down already. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, guys, this build is fast becoming the, the new solo, which is not a meta right now. It's very, very good. It's really fun to play. But like I said, it's not like crazy DPS like it is with wizards and stuff. But, you know, it's good. It's competitive. It's competitive. For a witch starter, man, this is nice. This is very, very nice. There we go. Boom. Let me just get rid of this. So even though I'm using confidence ritual, we can nuke at range as well. And it still be quite effective. There we go. So basically, we just want to cast the Prana Nado and make sure we group all the mobs together because the, the explosions will overlap and blow them up. Bang! There we go, it's down. Nice. But yeah, I'll record the group version of this, the fire version. My fire gear at the moment isn't great, unfortunately. My fire gear ain't great at the moment, so. But also, I get some better rolls. I'll uh, show you guys the fire version as well. The fire version of DPS is insane because it's possible to have a hundred and was it a hundred and twenty percent fire elemental damage on that particular setup. So you know it's very very strong. There we go. I hate these shock towers, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the sucker out now before I get wrecked. There we go. Oh mate, why just give us give us like the worst map we could possibly have as well. I hope we get one that's really nice, but we just got a shit ton of density. Go on. Oh, well, this one came in quite good. So, guys, in the early stage, as soon as you see the leap pack, man, what you want to do first off is just cast Haunt. Get the Haunt down first, get them all nice and tagged up, get in there, and then cast your, uh, your local swarm, which will buff them by 25%. And then just group them all up and blow the fuck out of them. <laughs> oh my god. I can't wait to get this suit fully can spared. On the season. I'm gonna push this to its limit on the season, man. Jesus Christ, we just absolutely wrecked that fool, don't we? Absolutely wrecked him. 
You know, we could change self res to a different rune as well. We could actually put Gruesome Feast into this build. Maybe Swampland Attunement would be a better choice, actually helping for the toughness. So there's another option there. But, you know, we've, I've played a lot of builds with no self res, and it can be quite tricky, but ultimately, you know, could be a better way to do it. We could even drop self res and put in um, and Pierce the Vow, but that would give us some mana issues there. But yeah, that's self res. We could change it to something different. Oh, sure, Pylon, that's nice. We've got a nice little. Uh, Last little dude we can kill, no? Oh, okay, let's go to the next map. Oh, come on, give us a good map! What the hell? <laughs> let's do this on a really good map. It's so cool though, if you get a really giant pile of trash, like a massive giant pile of trash, man, you could just absolutely shrek it. It's so much fun. We, we've got a little bit here, we've got a little bit here, so like, watch this guys, look. Look at this shit, look. There's a pack in the middle of this as well. And boom, they're dead. <laughs> Dead already! It's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, like I said earlier, guys, I was experimenting with a fire version of this for group play. And uh, it's possible to have Star Metal Kukri running this build. Because we've got fetishes in the uh, in the cube, from the cube to, you know, we've got permanent guys up. It's actually possible to drop uh, the Sacred Harvester for a Star Metal Kukri and have permanent BBV running this build as well. I've tested it out. It is a little bit more glassy, but we gain, remember, um, uh, Big Bad Voodoo has a base, a base uh, attack speed of 15% extra, you know, and this build is completely based off attack speed. I've tested it out and the DPS is absolutely crazy, but um, I've done that for four mans and it actually works really well because it benefits the whole group, especially the Rift Guardian Killer Demon Hunter and it makes him attack crazy. So basically pretty much there's just two runes you can choose for that particular setup, which is basically Slam Dance with 50% extra damage and Ghost Trance, which basically gives 20% damage reduction and 5% healing per second. So, you know, there's another version of that there. But yeah, it's really fun because that's what that's one of the best things about Lon. You know, it's extremely versatile. Which also is very versatile anyway, but with Lon it's just like Swiss Army knife right now. Especially with this uh, barrage setup. Finally, man, one of my favourite skills we can actually use properly now. Power part there. Oh, nice. Well, I've got power part now. I've tagged them up. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Let's try about range, yeah? Range there. Oh, it's filled. Oh, he's not dead, is he? Oh shit, let me kill him off. If I though died, man. There we go. This actually kills the uh, Rift Guardian quite well. Rift Guardian targets, guys, you want to be aiming just like uh, on Arrakis. You want, you want to have a boss that summons adds, basically. Because um, the explosion, the single target damage, like see this guy here, it won't be that great single target. See that? It's not that great single target. Even with ROE um, on him, you know, it's not going to be that great. It shines when there's a mob next to him like this, then this, and then the AOE actually kicks in. So single target, not that hot. When you clump a load of dudes up, that's when they get, get absolutely fucking shrek to it. There we go. Right, so remember the guys, haunt first, man. Get the haunts down first, then close in the gap. Keep casting, you've got to keep casting, I'm actually going to die, which like I might do now. Oh, we're right. Okay, we're okay, we're okay. Those uh, presses uh, nuke. Oh, another paragon, nice. Boom, there we go. Switch these dudes off. Not the fast lady, but it'll be a lot quicker once... Uh, once uh, we get some augments, man. Well, I do, guys. I re-record this video. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And uh, when I've got the four augments on the season, I'll be pushing this build live on seasons very, very soon on my Twitch page. Feel free to follow, guys. The link's just above me there. There we go. Illusionist man as well. Blech. Like, we've got confident for sure, but let's see if we can take him out from range. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a splitter, so I've got his illusionist, so I've got to take him out now. Got to reapply. ROE. And with illusionist, guys, ROE ring buff will drop when they split, so you have to recast it, FYI. Just like you're doing at Arrakis. There we go. Man, this build is so much fun! It's just so nice to, uh... Just so nice to uh, play. What have we got over here? Conduit? Uh, yeah, we could do that for the trash pop, I guess. There we go. Go a little bit in easy mode for a bit. Hey, there you go, boys. All right, give me that Rift Guardian. Let's go.
Also, guys, this build stacks stricken pretty fucking quickly as well because, you know, it's a fast, very fast attack. I don't know, we're nowhere near the right attack speed what I need right now. And even I can stack stricken pretty fucking quick. There we go. You can see that he's being frozen and stunned from myself and the follower. Follows just while we're ringing the Jang Do. Which is nice. Oh, mate, we're taking lumps at him. When you stop casting, the damage will go off. See, it's like it exploding. Well, most of them explode all the time anyway. There we go. Don't want to be too close to this guy in particular because he's got that nasty melee attack. You can see my cooler is up permanently now because we're just casting so quick. He's freeze lock. Bam! He's dead! And he's fucking dead, guys. How cool is this build, man? It's very, very nice, man. I'm really, really enjoying playing Spirit Barrage again, once again, on this Witch Doctor, man. It's very, very cool. But yeah, guys, this is basically now the best solo Witch Doctor build you guys can now play. It's very, very good. Very, very good. But like I said, you don't have to use red gems in the gear. You know, once you've got full can spares, you're going to get a natural all resistance buff from the intelligence. Then you could change those to back to topazes. But, you know, I've got, no, I've got no orbits right now, so red gems at the, at the start is a good choice, man. It's a good choice. And there you go, guys. That's the end of the video. Once again, thank you all very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I'll see you in the next one. Take fun, guys, and have fun in Sanctuary. Spit Rush, boys! It's real. It is real. Holy shit.